what's going on everybody what's up lockout man here in the building in the truck got a load for you uh man i got a load uh my fleet manager just brokered me a load go heading over towards uh west chicago welcome back to the stage of history I am on my way over to West Chicago. So while I'm on my way over there, I decided to go ahead and uh, and make a call. Who I'm gonna call today? One of my subscribers suggested Navajo. I, I might not be pronouncing that right. Navajo, Navajo Express. It's a trucking company out in Denver, Colorado. They have uh, several options for you, and they have several terminals. So, without further ado, let's give uh, Navajo Express a call and uh, find out what Navajo Express has to offer. <laughs> Hey, good morning. How you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am doing good. It's a, the weather out here is being kind of funky, but I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> uh, not too bad. Not too bad. All right, Lashawn. Well, um, looks like uh, are you just speaking in class A CDL position? Uh, I'm just I'm I'm calling for myself and others just to get a just to get a feel for the company. <laughs> Definitely. And what are you currently looking for as far as the driving position goes? Uh, uh, that's why I'm calling to talk to you to see uh, what you guys got available. All right, all right. Are you still in Cleveland, Ohio? Uh, yes, I am. All right. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for a driving position. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you right off the bat, all we have at the moment in your area is going to be an over-the-road route that's three weeks out and three days home running all 48 states. But let me check and see if we have any other routes available. So give me one moment. All right, thanks for the So it looks like I've decided indeed that over the road route is the only route we have. But if you're looking around, it's definitely a great route. We're getting a minimum 3,000 miles to upwards of 3,500 miles weekly. It is three weeks out and three days home. But if you want to stay out longer, you're more than welcome to, up to five weeks. For every additional week you stay out, we will provide you an additional day home. And uh, let's see here. You are going to be running all 48 states. Right. Does that sound like something you may be interested in? Uh, well, I got some questions of my own. If you don't, if you don't mind my asking. Of course. All right, give me, give me a hot second. I went into a store to buy a slice of pizza. I bumped into a girl. Her name is Mona. What? Mona Lisa. What? Mona Lisa. All right, I'm back. All right, so the you know these are uh, these questions that I got, you know, they're not only for you know for me to find out what the company is about. But you know, I got a, I got some, you know, some driver friends and you know, family members that's interested in the companies that I call as well. Definitely. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my first, uh, my first question to you: Do you guys offer uh, company-sponsored training? We do, so I can tell you, um, we will require you to have your Class A already, of course, but once we do bring you on board, if you fall either within uh, zero to three months of experience within the last three years uh, with tractor trailers, then we would put you through a four-week training course getting paid $80 a day for that, and here you'd pretty much be doing, it's pretty much five weeks of training, so you'd be doing four weeks of training over the road, and then one week training in the yard doing backing, or if you have... Uh, let's see here, three to six months of experience that we could verify within the last three years. And we would only put you through a two-week training course. But it will be pretty much, let's see here, two weeks training over the road and then one week training in the yard doing backing. So those are our two uh, options. Either way, you would get paid $80 a day for that. And if you happen to have more than six months of experience within the last three years that we can verify, we will still have that two-week refresher course available for you if you did want to do that. Either way, like I said, you would still get paid eighty dollars a day. Now, uh, what we would do before that is actually get an application from me. Of course, we'd run your most recent DAC uh, reports as well as your motor vehicle record, 
and your uh, criminal background, and then from there, considering everything looks all good with us, we would be able to welcome you to orientation, which is located here in Denver, Colorado. Orientation is every Monday and Wednesday, but for these next two weeks, we're only going to have orientation on Monday the 19th and Monday the 26th. It is two and a half days long, and we will pay you $75 upon completion and getting your driver code, uh, $75 for that. Okay, perfect. Because what I can do is I can actually send you all these routes that we have available too. Uh, for the most part, I guess it's just the over the road. But if you have any family that lives elsewhere, I can see what routes we have available as well for uh, them. Other than Ohio, what other higher areas do you guys hire out of? Um, let's see here. Well, I'll give you kind of a rundown of some of our more common routes that a lot of people do depending on where they're at. So other than our over-the-road route, we have a 15 Western that's going to 15 states west of Missouri. So this is keeping the west coast, and it's pretty much going to all the states on the west coast of Missouri, literally. And uh, let's see here. It's getting you two weeks out and two days home, and you can expect at least... 2,500 to upwards of 2,700 miles weekly. That's definitely a great route for people who are wanting to stay more west coast, not really go into the east or southeast as much. Uh, yeah, the east or southeast as much. And then let's see here, another route we have, we have two different Costco routes. Um, we have a Costco dedicated route, which is going, coming from Salt Lake City to Denver, and that's getting you home every other day. Pay for that route is gonna be up to 58 cents per mile. We also have a Costco Doubles route, which is also coming out of uh, Salt Lake City, but then it's also going into uh, Idaho, Montana, and it can also go into Wyoming if you're in Wyoming. As well as if you're in Wyoming, you could also do the Costco dedicated route. So anyways, this Costco Doubles route is hauling doubles. You would have to have your doubles endorsement for it, but it's paying a little bit better than the 57. It's paying up to Let's see here, paying up to 66 cents per mile. So there's that for you. And then as well, let's see here, a little bit more information. Let's see what else we got. Um, we have several routes around Denver, if you have any family in Denver. We currently do have a route right now uh, called our... Atlanta Regional Route. It is closed at the moment, but I'm going to give you some information on this in case you have any family near Georgia or Florida. Uh, this route is coming out of Conley, Georgia, and going into North Carolina, South Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, and Orlando, Florida, and it's paying $185 a day and giving you home weekly. Now, since this route is closed, we do have another route that we're uh, pushing more of our drivers to do until this Atlanta Regional Route has more availability, then we can start switching drivers who prefer that route over. And so this route that we're subjecting everyone to is called our Southeast Dedicated Route. It's getting you home every week and a half for two whole days. And of course, uh, like our other routes, if you want to stay out longer and build up home time, you're more than welcome to do that. It's coming out of the same area, so it's actually coming out of around Orlando, uh, Florida, going past Jacksonville into Georgia uh, to Atlanta. And then it's going through both the Carolinas, both the Virginias, going through Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. And then it's going through Missouri, going through Kansas to the border of Colorado. And then it's going through the southwestern part of Oklahoma, and it's going through Texas, past Dallas and Houston. So that's pretty much how your route would look is up over and down, up over and down each way. Okay. And uh, you're expecting at least 2,700 miles weekly or more. And this is a cents per mile route. So with that being said, how much experience do you personally have driving tractor trailers? Uh, I have three years going on four years of tractor trailer experience. Uh, Perfect. Let's say we can verify those full four years. I do apologize for interrupting you. What were you gonna say? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, that sounds that sounds good so far. What what about uh, where's your terminals located at? We have several terminals. One in uh, Colorado. One in Tulsa, Arizona. We have one in Atlanta, Georgia. We have one in Philadelphia. We also do have a route called our uh, Philadelphia Local. It's not open at the moment, but when it does open, if you have any family over there, I can definitely give you more information on that route in a moment. And then, uh, let's see here, we have one in, I believe we have one in Minneapolis, so I'll have to confirm that. I know we have a uh, terminal in, uh, let's see here, Rockwell, Texas, and as well, Pottsville, Arkansas. 
and let's see here, one in Salt Lake City as well. Okay. Well, so quite, a, quite a bit all over the place. Okay. But if you are looking for specific areas, definitely let me know, and I can look up uh, which exact terminals would be the closest to either you or any family members who may be interested. Okay. What about uh, what about a sign-on bonus? Uh, you guys offer a sign-on bonus, and if so, how much it is, and how is it paid out? Well, I can't tell you right off the bat. Navajo Express actually does not have any sign-on bonus. We do have a couple miles incentives, but no sign-on bonus, and I'll tell you why. Reason being is because a lot of companies you'll find do have sign-on bonuses, typically don't even offer to pay that out to you until after you work there for a certain amount of time, such as six months or a year, and even then, between that time, uh, typically they just have problems with driver retention, which is a good reason to have the sign-on bonus as an incentive to keep you working there longer. So with that being said, we just care to pay you good from the get-go and let you know exactly from the get-go what you're going to expect as far as pay goes and really just see what we can do as far as keeping you happy and comfortable and confident from there on out. We don't want to give you any surprises and uh, really make you feel like you're having to work towards uh, getting something to stay here. We want you to come and join Navajo because you see the company as itself and as well uh, to recognize that Navajo Express is a family-owned and oriented company. So making sure that we get you those miles to run as well as that home time to get you home and enjoy uh, your family as well as just your personal time is very important to us. So with that being said, uh, to answer your question plain and simple, we do not have a sign-on bonus, but we do have a five cent miles incentive on top of the base of your pay, which uh, pretty much you can get every single month, and upwards of 90% of our drivers are hitting that every single month. All we ask for you to get that every month is one, you get no DOT citations, so no tickets. We ask that you keep the idle low under 6%, which isn't too hard because we do have Thermo King APU to help you out with that. And then we also do ask that you try and make your deliveries on time, which is kind of expected. And as well, we ask that you get 11,500 miles in a month, which isn't uh, not necessarily, or I should say, which is definitely feasible considering most of our routes, if not um, almost all of them, you're getting minimum 2,200 miles weekly. So definitely feasible. So there is a threshold on miles in order to hit that. Somewhat, but I mean, it's really not hard as long as you're making sure you make your deliveries on time, you're driving safely, so uh, you're not getting any tickets, you're keeping within the speed limit, all that good stuff, and then you're really just, you're, you're regularly running. You really don't have to run very hard to even hit that uh, amount either, because let's say you only get 11,000 miles a month. We're only going to take off one penny. So let's say you did everything else, but you only got the 11,000 miles for that month, you'll get a four cent bonus on top of your base. And again, this is something that you can get every single month. So it's not something that we only allow you to get once. You pretty much have the opportunity to make sure that you just keep your deliveries on time, you don't get tickets, you keep the idle low, which again, that Thermo King APU is pretty much going to do a lot of the work for you. And then just making sure that you, um, really, that you just stay running. All you have to do is really stay running and uh, hit that mileage incentive every month. Alright, for uh, pre-employment uh, drug testing, do you guys require air follicles? We do not. Only a urine test and then of course we will have you do a pre-trip and do a road test. And the road test just uh, involves our driver trainers, or I should say, yeah, our driver trainers uh, really evaluate your performance. So just making sure that you stay within the speed limit, you're stopping correctly, you're really just driving as you would as if your own mother was in the car, making sure you drive correctly. All right. What about uh, what about an agility test? Something like you guys want to know if we can get in and out of the trailer, in and out of the truck. You guys do something like that? You know, I'm actually not too positive, but that's something I can get the answer to right away. Would you mind if I put you on a quick hold? All right. Thanks for holding. So if you even still have an HP test. It's pretty much just going to be, like you said, having you do simple functions like getting in the truck, getting out of the truck, uh, just really uh, checking on the truck as you would normally if you were uh, by yourself without a uh, performance check on you. So really just making sure that you can do the duties needed. What's your, uh, what's your policies on failing? Um, let's see here. We do look back within the last seven years, but it really does depend as well the case of what happened. Specifically because now we are starting to uh, kind of evaluate things a little bit more so we can really see if it's something that would or would not be a disqualifying factor with us. But I can tell you the one way I can honestly be for sure 
uh, as far as if we'd be able to bring you aboard or not if you did have something on your record. You would have to fill out an application so then I can run reports and even then I'll be able to kind of look a little bit deeper and I'll have that, uh, how should I say, I'll, I'll more have a, uh, a something better to lean on when I go reaching out to safety to see if it's something that we could or could not look over. Okay, okay. All right, so you mentioned uh, about a refresher course for new drivers that has less than like three months, six months. Uh, yeah. So, so you guys have trainers there. What is what is the uh, what is the wait time for a trainer uh, for drivers that has uh, that has that least experience? Well, I do appreciate you asking. I can definitely tell you right now. It looks like. Um, we now actually changed our student program a little bit, so now we're only bringing about two students per week to ensure that each student can uh, be helped out officially with a driver trainer. So honestly, you go through those two and a half days orientation, and then considering you do need that training, uh, let's say we brought you on for Monday, just an example. You would go through two and a half days, and then on Wednesday you'd get coded, considering you did well on your uh, drive test and everything, you pass the urine test, and then um, from there, we pretty much have you check out on Thursday and get set to actually start doing that training. Okay. What's the uh, what's the what's the experience? How, how much experience do a driver trainer there has? Let's see. Well, I know. I mean, a lot of our driver trainers have had different amounts of experience. I can't really tell you right off the bat on my knowledge, but I can definitely check and see what's kind of uh, more varied. But I can tell you. Um, our driver trainers have either been around the company for a while or we've found trainers that we have found to be, uh, yeah, from what I've kind of gotten off with some of my fellow recruiters is it looks like most of our trainers actually have about five years of experience or more. You may find a couple that have maybe four years experience, but we make sure that our trainers are up to date as far as just their performance level. Because we're not going to throw you into a truck with someone who doesn't necessarily know what they're doing, so to speak. What's the starting cent per mile there? The starting cent per mile is going to be a base of 34 cents per mile. Cent per mile is going to be a base of 34 cents per mile. And that's pretty much for less than two years of experience. So we would start out at 34 cents, and then that 5 cent mile incentive I was talking about, that's where that comes into play. So that, on top of your base, would actually put you at 39 cents per mile. And so then after six months of experience, or sorry, goodness, after six months of being with us, we're going to bump you up to 40 cents. And after a year of being with us, we're going to give you another one cent bonus that bumps you up to 41 cents. Now, um, what about for the, your experience? Yeah, what about for drivers with my experience? Yeah, so let's say you're at four years of experience that we can verify. We would have you at a base of 38 cents per mile. And then we're adding that five cent mileage bonus on top of that, which actually bumps you up to 43 cents. At the end of the year, we're going to bump you up to 44 cents. How does that sound? Uh, that sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> That's why I'm pretty I, interesting. Um, yeah, I can't agree uh, right off the bat. Um, definitely compared to other companies, pay is going to be a little bit lower. But as far as Miles Virginia, which is, I think, yeah, I think I mentioned that before. So with this company, uh, Navajo Express really cares about getting you those miles. Uh, like I said, we're not going to lie to you and just shuffle you over the road, and the next thing you know, we're not getting you any miles to run or we're not getting you home. Uh, even though our pay is a little bit lower than some competitors, which you'll actually find if you look um, kind of with all the companies compared, we're kind of in the middle, honestly. And so with our miles, we're actually one of the best companies known to get your miles. So even though the pay may be a little bit lower than what other companies are offering, they're not going to get you as many miles running like we would have you run it. And even then, we're giving you all the miles you want, but if you want to run more, you're more than welcome to. Unlike where some companies will give you a certain amount that you can run, and then if you try and get more, you're kind of stuck with what you got. But uh, that's definitely something just to think about. And if you ever do want me to calculate the pay with some of the miles on any routes you may be interested in, just to give you a better idea of what you'd be looking at for pay, then I can definitely do that too. Is the, uh, is the miles or is the pay is based on straight pay or is there a sliding scale? As far as that goes, it's definitely straight. Regardless of how many miles you run, it's going to be 34 cents per mile with that 5 cent mileage incentive on top, so 39 cents until you get bumped up to 40 cents after six months of being with us. So that being said, 
it really just depends on you, how hard you want to run, which will affect your pay, definitely. But uh, the pay itself isn't going to um, fluctuate up or down based on, um, or I should say the base itself isn't going to fluctuate based on how many miles you get. You will get paid 34 cents per mile if you do fall within that pay scale. Or for you, you'll get paid 38 cents per mile with that five cent miles incentive regardless of how many miles you run. But of course, uh, obviously, if you run more, it w definitely will uh, affect your pay in a positive way. Do you guys, uh, all right, so let's say I'm coming on, and of course that first week gonna be kind of tough for me. Do you guys offer a pay advance? Let's see, we actually do, yes. So I can tell you, um, considering you did go on your drive test and everything, and then you pass the current test, you get a driver code, um, we would then be able to get you that advancement, but it's something that you would have to let us know as soon as you get into orientation, that way we can account for it. Now keep in mind, if you were to uh, come to orientation and let's say um, on your drive test you ran a couple red lights or you were speeding a little bit too much, uh, we may have the decision to bump you down either to a P1 or a P2 depending on how your performance was during the drive test, which then you would have to go through the training before we can give you that advancement. But I mean, it is case by case at the same time. If it's so what would happen to me for, uh, what would happen to me if for whatever reason that I don't make it, uh, make it through? Will you guys give me a way back home? Now, it depends on the situation. So let's say we uh, have you do the urine test and it doesn't come back uh, as need be, then you would have to find your own means of getting, uh, getting home, considering that we brought you out here and you were aware you are going to take the urine test and then uh, things kind of go south with that. Otherwise, so let's say, um, let's say you're missing some paperwork that we need, which really we would just require you to bring two forms of ID and your uh, med card, but we do have an in-house physician, so either way we would get you a new one because we'd have you do a physical too. And uh, so, I mean, there have been cases where some people forget both of their uh, forms of ID, and that's something that is, of course, needed. So then we will uh, possibly provide them like a bus home, or um, they may have their way of getting home. But as far as if, let's say you were to uh, fail your urinary analysis, then that's something where you'd have to kind of get yourself home. Right. Or you would have to get yourself home, not kind of, but. All right, so you guys bringing me out here for orientation. How how am yes. I coming out there and where I'm coming to? We would bring you out to um, so our our uh, I should say our corporate terminal in Denver, Colorado. And with your experience, if we can verify over six months of experience within the last three years, then we'd be able to get you a flight or a bus if you wanted that and bring you out to Denver for orientation. Now, if you had less than six months of experience, of course, we would get you a bus just because it's it's pretty much uh, the money that we're spending on everything. And so from there, we bring out the orientation. But uh, it's really up to your discretion how you'd like to get here. If you have more than six months of experience, we would get you a three-night stay in the Radisson Hotel in downtown Denver. And then we will provide a, uh, let's see here, continental breakfast will be available at the hotel. And we will provide lunch for you. And we're going to get you a taxi to pick you up from uh, either the airport or the Greyhound station and take you to the hotel. So you really don't really have to worry about anything once you get on the plane. All right. So, what about uh, what about the hotel stay? Do I gotta do I gotta share that with a buddy, or can I have the room to nope. myself? Yep, the room will be all for yourself. And of course, uh, let's say we did happen to bring any of your family members on, you guys were trying to get started around the same time. Is that something you wanted to do, where you guys wanted to kind of share the room? Is that something you could do? But otherwise, it is going to be a single occupancy. Per diem, is it offered and is it mandatory? Let's see here. As far as staying in the hotel. No, no, per diem, this is part of the pay. Oh, let's see here. Uh, we do have per diem, but I am still kind of learning that myself, so I can definitely go over it with you, but if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to actually send that to you in the email that I'm about to send you with all the routes that we have available. Do you guys offer vacation and holiday pay? We do. Now, let's see. I'm actually still kind of learning that myself, but that's something I can get an easy answer on right now if you want to put you out of the cold. That's fine. So we do have a, uh, let's see here, 
here. So after a year of being with us, we will provide a one week of paid vacation, and after two years of being with us, we will provide two years or two uh, weeks. <laughs> All right. Is uh, now for paid vacations? Like, is there a set amount that you guys offer for the vacation, or is the vacation based on uh, like? maybe a total week of what you would have had drive or driven or is that something that you you don't you know it's pretty much just going to be uh like simply that if you've been with us for a year then we will provide the whole uh one week of paid vacation uh, paid vacation it's really going to look how it is considering you stay with us for a year and let me get you that week or uh our paid week i should say what about a uh, breakdown and detention pay? Now, breakdown, I'm going to have to get confirmation on the pay for that because I originally had heard from my old notes that it was around 30, then I heard it was 10, so I have to confirm that. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Cool. So, let's see here. Let's see if there's something I can include in the email. No, definitely. Just because I want to give you the opportunity to kind of look at it as well once we get off the phone and be able to make a decision that isn't so rushed without feeling... Uh, not necessarily saying you are, but I definitely don't want to kind of um, hawk over you and just uh, kind of push you to kind of choose a deci decision because I know that you definitely have a lot to think about and as well as your family members are uh, possibly looking for a good fit as well. I want to make sure it's something that you guys all uh, may find to your liking. So with that being said, and I appreciate, I appreciate the time that you're giving us on this uh, on these uh, questions that I got. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And if there's any other questions you may have, even in the future, even if we've already gone over it, feel free to reach out to me because I want to make sure that I'm helping you out the whole time and really providing the uh, the peace of mind as well as just the knowledge for yourself and your family to kind of see if this is something that you would like to pursue or not. Because it definitely is something that you got to take into consideration completely since you're you're in a whole different field compared to other people and a lot of people don't recommend how uh, how strenuous being a trucker can be since you have to go away from home or you're just spending long hours uh, really traveling all over the place. It's something you got to take into consideration because it, it'll affect uh, not only your personal time but really just your time in general. So I want to make sure we're giving you the right fit, giving you all the uh, information needed and you uh, you wanted the information on that part D of, as well, right? Right. Perfect. Okay, just making sure I include that in here. How, how often? How often do layovers happen there, and, and, and do you get paid for it? Um, let's see here. I do believe you get paid for layover. I apologize. I need to get more information on that as well. I'm I'm not too uh, familiar with the breakdown or the layaway or layover pay, but I can tell you it doesn't happen too frequently as well as the breakdowns either. Our freight is a no touch no touch freight drop and hook. So if uh, something is taking a minute, what do is end up having you reach out to our dispatch and as well they'll reach out to the uh, actual drop and then from there they're going to get things moving along so typically you're you're really not going to have to worry about it but it is available to you and i'm going to include that in the email as well i do apologize i don't have the information on hand what, what benefits do you guys offer well i can tell you we go through united healthcare and we got uh, let's see here vision health and dental and so with that being said so you're eligible after 90 days of being with us will be 100% paid by novel while others may require that you contribute. So for instance, for your basic life at AD and the insurance, we will pay that completely. For your employee assistance program, we will pay that completely. And for things that we're going to need you to contribute a little bit on will be your medical, dental, and vision insurance along with your health savings account and your supplement life insurance, disability insurance, accident insurance, critical illness insurance, home and auto, as well as your legal assistance and pet insurance. And just in case you're interested on that, we do require that they are at least 25 pounds or under, but I mean, as long as they're not like a huge dog, like a Great Dane or a German Shepherd, uh, it may be uh, something that we could have a little bit more lenience on, but it's definitely case by case. And then as well, uh, we do require a $500 pet deposit that you can uh, have paid out uh, monthly, which would be about here, I believe, you were 50 or 80, goodness, I'm going to have to check. All right, 
think you hold, so it's a good thing I confirmed that. The deposit is actually going to be paid out in four payments, so pretty much uh, four payments a month of one twenty-five. Okay, okay. What about rider policy? Rider policy, we just require that they are 11 years of age or older, and we do ask for $28 a month for insurance. Okay. Do you guys uh, require hazmat? We do not require hazmat, though if you do have it, we will list it when we bring it into class because it's definitely helpful for our knowledge if we ever do need someone with a hazmat. All right, so let's say, well, of course, I don't have my hazmat, but if I come on with the company and get my hazmat while I'm with the company, would they reimburse me for getting my hazmat? We wouldn't be able to reimburse you, but we would take you to take into consideration that since you have it, it's something that's very helpful to us if we ever have a load that needs to be uh, taken with the hazmat, um, how should I say, uh, endorsement. But other than that, it's not uh, reimbursed. All right. What's your, what's your knowledge on uh, leasing? Do you guys offer leasing there? We do offer lease, at least to purchase and owner operations. Now I can tell you, I only have some information on uh, lease to purchase, but I'll give you what I got. So as far as lease purchase, uh, for the lease purchase pay, it's 65% of the line haul revenue and 100% of the fuel surcharge. As far as the responsibility of lease to purchase, it's going to be 100% of the fuel for both tractor and reaper, and then licensing permits, permits, tags, and uh, anything so as such and as well as insurance. Now, as far as the fees, though, there's going to be a $15 weekly trailer rental and then a $35 uh, weekly blue tree deposit until $1,500 is met. Between $660 to $68 weekly for tractor payments. And all lease are about 48 months. Walkaway leases, uh, we will for a buyout of $1, and at the end of the lease, and all units carry a 500k warranty that they inherit. Okay, okay, cool. That's good to know. That's some good information on the uh, leasing. Um, yeah, and I'm actually going to include that too. You wouldn't happen to be interested in owner operations at all either, would you? Uh, uh, you, you can tell me a little bit about it if you if you have the information on it. Yeah, I got some info. Um, let's see here. So maybe for the future, if anything. Our incentives for uh, owner operations would be here 70% of line haul revenue. is going to be 70% of recoverable accessorials. Uh, I need to get a little bit more information in depth on that if you are wanting that. 100% uh, of the recoverable line haul F FSD. And then there's 100% reefer fuel with proof of purchase and PO issued. Weekly settlement. There's going to be access to the model fuel network savings single source dispatch and then as well competitive tightening on parts cost about uh, more than 10 percent and then we offer 99 dollars an hour for not post shop work now as far as deductions go it can be a 45 dollar weekly uh, charge for trailer usage fee or which would be the trailer usage fee it includes satellite data and such is also going to be a $45 uh, week, dollar weekly fee for licensing and permits, and a $1,500 deposit, and $48 for ELD, which includes transflow data and service. As far as the requirements, we just require that they are uh, a six, uh, six year newer, or I should say attractive that is six years or newer. And then, uh, let's see, the fifth wheel just can't be higher than 52 inches. Okay. Okay. That's uh, that's good to know. Are all the miles paid, and how is it calculated? Let's see. Give me one moment. I'll grab a calculator for you. And so you said, are all the miles paid? Yeah. Are all the miles paid, and how is it calculated? Like, is it from zip to zip? Is it uh, is it from zip to zip? Uh, is it hub miles? Is it um, uh, Ram and Nally miles? And you're speaking speaking for uh, lease purchase rate. Uh, no, I'm just talk, I'm talking in general now, like I'm not not for the oh, lease. Okay. I'm talking about for you know in general now. How how is the, how's the miles paid out? I believe it, uh, uh, but from what I can tell you, so like for instance, let me just get a calculator real quick because I mean. 
Let's say we have you at your base of uh, 38 cents with that five cent mileage incentive that puts you at 41 or 43. And then let's say, for instance, you're doing over the road, and that month you got 3,000 miles. You do that 3,000 miles by that, and you're looking about 1,290 before taxes. Let's say you ran a little harder, you're looking at 3,500 that month. You got 1,505 before taxes. So it's, uh, I, I do apologize if I didn't necessarily answer it completely, but I am kind of, uh, I don't know if I might be a little confused on the terminology or if I am hitting the right points, but how does that sound to you? What do you think? That sounds, that sounds, that sounds pretty interesting. So you say it's basically based off of oil miles. Do you guys reimburse for scales and tolls? For tolls, I believe we might have a card for you. Let me check real quick. Alright, thanks for holding. So, uh, let's see here. It would actually be with our Calm Data card that we would have you use that for tolls and scales. See, um, what? All right. So, what other what other divisions do you guys offer there? You guys, uh, other than drive-in, do you guys offer other divisions? Well, our uh, our uh, how should I say our trailers are actually going to be eighty five percent reefer and fifteen percent drive-in. So it's a treat drop the hook. Other positions are you asking within the company, or just uh, no, no, like, like other positions? No, yeah. like you, you, you just mentioned it. So you said fifteen percent drive-in and eighty-five percent uh, reefer. So y'all don't have y'all don't have a tanker division. Y'all don't have a, a flatbed division. Yeah, unfortunately, it's all eighty-five percent reefer and fifteen percent drive-in. Okay. Uh, one last question for the lease. Uh, how much, uh, uh, how much per mile that the lease driver can receive? Alright, okay. so it's going to be 65% of the gross. Oh, I'm trying to figure out some, some other, some other questions that I may or may not have because you went, you went over extensively on, uh, over a few of them already. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Is there? And I do apologize if I'm kind of jumping back and forth. I just want to be sure I'm touching base with everything you need to know. Uh, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Um, now you said that I would be driving to 48 states. Uh, is is there a forced dispatch to California or New York City? It is not, but we do pay an extra seventy-five dollars if you go into New York City. And uh, I mean, as far as as far as California, I mean, if that's an area that you're trying to avoid, you can definitely list that, and we're going to do what we can to um, really navigate you out of that area. But, I mean, there may be a load or two that you may need to take into California, but we're really going to try and route you elsewhere. If you have a preference on somewhere else within the 48 states, that's going to be um, notifying that, considering if you were to do over the road, that is. Of course, uh, since we do go to all 48 states, we're going to try and route you everywhere else other than where you want to go or where you don't want to go. But I mean, can't I can't promise you that we won't be able to have you not go in there at all. Oh, okay. As far as like California or New York. What about uh, what about team driving? Do you guys offer that? We do. For team drivers, we pay. Let's see. Oh. Let me restart. So you're pretty much getting about 6,000 to 6,500 miles uh, weekly. So you're sharing each other's miles, or I should say getting paid for each other's miles. And then as well, you're splitting the base of 44 cents per mile. All right, so let's say everything good. I decide to come on and I'm, uh, you know, driving. Uh, let's say uh, I decide to quit. What's the policy on bringing the truck, uh, turning the truck in? <laughs> Let's see here. I mean, we do need you to bring the truck to terminal, of course, so it's not considered leaving it, but I need to get more information on that specifically. I definitely don't want to give you any uh, incorrect information. I want to confirm if it has to be exactly just a nearby terminal for where you're at, or if it has to be our terminal in Denver. All right. So it just has to be any terminal nearby where you're at. So um, let's say you happen to be 
by Rockwall, Texas. You can drop it off our terminal over there, or uh, we got one in Tulsa. And it really depends. Uh, definitely, we would hope that we can do what we can to uh, really make you feel comfortable and confident and enjoying what you're doing here in Navajo. So we would do what we can to uh, really avoid from that that from happening. But okay. if uh, it ever came to it, something came up, and you just needed some time, then that's how you would go about that. So I won't have no problem. Let's say. Uh I won't have no problem bobtailing the truck back to a back to a terminal, and I won't have nothing to show up on my uh, on my DAP report as far as me returning the truck. Definitely, definitely. As long as you're uh, making sure that that's taken care of, that way it's not considered abandoning the equipment. All right. What equipment? Speaking of equipment, what equipment do you guys offer? What do you, what do you guys have? Uh, Automatics, 10 speeds, uh, what, and what's the variance of the trucks that you guys got? So we have 2015, 16, 17, and newer model Kenworth, but we put you in could be any of them, and of course you can make a request for a certain what, but definitely uh, can't promise you we'd be able to get you in that at least right away. I'm not saying we would be able to get you in a preferred one at all, but definitely want to put that out there that uh, most likely we're going to put you in what we can and then work towards getting you in what you want. But uh, either way, it would be um, a 2015, 16, 17, or newer model Kenworth T680 with 10-speed transmissions, a 76-inch sleeper, and Thermoking ATU. And we do have manual and automatic. And if you happen to have a preference, let's say you prefer automatic, like I said previously, I can't promise you that we'd be able to get you in that automatic right away, especially because right now we do have a lot of first come, first serve for automatic since we're getting more, and that is more of a preference. But I can tell you if that is a preference, uh, despite what we put you in, uh, let's say we brought you to orientation, you finished orientation, then you're ready to get your truck, we may be able to get you that automatic right off the bat, or we may have to put you in a manual for maybe a week or two and then get you that automatic. And it may not even be a week or two that we have to have you wait to get that automatic. It's okay. just kind of play by ear. Okay. What, uh, for driver comfort, what, what, uh, what other things do you guys offer inside of the truck? For well, I can tell you right off the bat, we do not have a television or a refrigerator in there. That is something that you have to get yourself, but we're more than happy to install them for you. We do have, again, those thermal king APUs, and then we do have a, uh, let's see here, we have our blue tree system, which is our electronic log, and a GPS in there as well for it, and a strictly front-facing drive cam which is strictly, like I say, front-facing, and it's only there, its only purpose is to make sure that it records anything if it feels that the truck itself has been hit or there's been a collision or it feels you uh, slam on the brakes real hard. It automatically turns on to try and uh, cover whatever you may need as far as proof on your end if something were to happen to the vehicle. All right. Uh, what's, the, what's the truck's governing day? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. What'd you say? Sorry, the truck is going to be governed at 62 miles per hour on foot and 65 miles per hour on cruise. Uh, uh, can I can I take the truck home for my own time? Now, I have heard very answers about that, so I am definitely going to need to reach out to someone to confirm. But from what I have been told recently is um, we may have you be able to take the truck by your place of residence, especially if there's a terminal, that you can leave it at the terminal and get your cell phone from there. But I know that uh, typically we do have accounts with different, um, how should I say, different uh, like truck stops such as Love or uh, TA that you may be able to leave the truck at as long as it's a state. Uh, location. That's it, man. I mean, that's it. That's awesome. Awesome Q&A with you. What's your name? My name is Anissa, and my extension is going to be 0645. Anissa? Yeah. Oh, can you spell that? Because that, that sounds like a unique <laughs> name. Yeah, right. It's definitely, uh, it could be said many ways. So, uh, it's going to be A-N-Y-S-S-A. A-N-Y-S-S-A. That is a unique name. I like that. Anissa. What, what would be the number one reason to uh, drive for Navajo? Well, I can tell you, it, I personally got to say, like, as far as just bringing drivers board, you can tell from other companies what really sets us apart is making sure that not only we're getting you those miles, but we want to make sure that we don't make you feel like another truck number. We want you to feel like you're joining a part of a family, and it's definitely a great deal of respect that we care to be 
brought out to our drivers. We want to make sure that unlike other companies, that you guys, or I apologize, that our drivers really just feel uh, more like they're being taken care of, like their needs are met and that their needs are important and that it's just not going to get swept under the rug. And then as well that they have uh, relationships with the people that they work with. So you're going to be able to meet your driver trainers, you're going to get build relationships with your uh, recruiters. In fact, if we bring in orientation, I'll be able to pop my head in there and I'll be able to introduce myself personally so we can put a face to the name. And as well, just really being able to see personally from my end that Navajo really does care to make sure that at least their drivers are taken care of better than where they were previously. That we provide the, uh, not only the respect, but as well as the consideration that they may have not been given at other places. This is really important to us to make sure that when we bring our drivers on, that we do what we can to make them uh, kind of change their perspective about the driving uh, industry a little bit. Just because other companies don't tend to care about their drivers as much and just bring them aboard, they do what they can and say what they can to bring them on board and the next thing you know it's like they don't even matter anymore and that's definitely not the case here in Navajo. We want to make sure that you guys are, like I said, not just another truck number. You guys are going to be known by not only your, uh, not your driver codes, but specifically your names and who you are as people. It's, it's, it's really uh, more of a building environment here at Navajo, so we want to make sure that that's something we get our point across to. All right, awesome. How how long have you been a how long have you been a recorder with the company? I'll be honest, it's only been let's see, started in July, so only a couple months. But I can tell you, throughout these couple months, like you really get to know the drivers themselves, and you get to see like not only just what they're here for, as far as kind of gaining experience or going over the road, but what brought them here and what they're going through, and it really. It's really nice to be able to, like I say, build that relationship with those, those drivers and kind of just see what you can do as not only a recruiter, but just as part of the Navajo team to help out those drivers and do what you can to make sure their needs are met. And that's why I do say I want to make sure I uh, get that point across and definitely. If you have any uh, questions at all, if you need help with anything, or if you have any family members or friends who need any information and they're not even necessarily ready to join Navajo, but they just want some answers, or uh, need some questions answered, I should say, I will be here to help you guys out the whole way. Because I want to make sure that um, I'm providing all the uh, information and uh, just the peace of mind that we do have a good fit for you here and that you wouldn't be making a wrong decision by joining Navajo. In fact, you'd probably be making uh, one of the better decisions you have with other trucking companies. As well. Okay. Well, thank you. Can you mention your name one more time? Of course. My name is Anissa, Anissa, and my extension is 0645. All right, Anissa. Well, thank you very much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I do record all my conversations with everybody so I can uh, so I can get the information, the right information out there so that people won't think that, like, oh, okay, they just blowing smoke up a person. Exactly, yeah. So, and I can't tell you, I, I definitely don't want to be those recruiters that, or one of those recruiters, I should say, that just... Uh, tells you what you need to hear to bring you aboard and the next thing you know it's like you're forgotten. I want to make sure that, I mean, even if you don't come aboard uh, right now with Navajo, at least you kind of get some more information on what we're about and if we might be a good fit for you and we'd love to have you come aboard. Even if it's not now, I'll be here to help you out. Alright, man. Well, thank you. Uh, Anissa. No problem at all. Anissa, right? Anissa? Yeah, Anissa. Uh, Anissa. See, I'm not good with names. No, you're good. I've been called a Naya, Lisa. You don't even know. <laughs> Not that hard, but uh, it's surprising. So no worries at all. And uh, let's see here. Just confirm. What? Did you have any uh, specific routes that you may be interested in that you'd like me to send you? Anything around the the, the eastern coast, the western area? Well, do you? What, what other? Do you guys offer like regional? Like what? What regional routes that you guys? Uh, I mean, we sure. You, so, here oh, for instance, oh, uh, I'm kind of glad that you mentioned that. So, you said I will be uh, out of Ohio. I will be the 48 states. But can I go regional if I want to? Is there? Is, you, would, would there be? There you, wouldn't be a problem with that. Yeah, you definitely can. If we had a route that you were interested in. 
you'd be able to definitely do it. The only reason why I say it would be better for you to do over the road other than like our southeast regional, which actually isn't too far from me. It's going through Kentucky and the bottom half of Illinois and Indiana. Um, for routes such as that, like you could definitely do other routes that you find of interest. It's just the fact that, like I said, making sure we get you home is very important to us and we don't want to uh, put you on a route where we're going to make you think it's the best fit for you and then next thing you know you're never getting home. So our main reason to kind of tell you what we have available for you is to make sure that we can get you home within a reasonable amount of time for those days off. But I mean, if there's a route that you find that you'd like to do better and there's somewhere else that you're willing to do your home time, then you could totally do it. All right, cool. Awesome. All right, Anisha, thank you very much for your time. I really do appreciate the, the knowledge that you do have with uh, with uh, Navajo. You know, and you only been there for a couple of months, but you, you, came, you came across as a good recruiter and you got all the information and answered all the questions that I had uh, that I had to ask. So I really do appreciate yeah, the time. I appreciate Thank you very all those much. questions. You're helping me kind of learn a little bit more on how to not only approach them, but how I can uh, kind of um, relay that information before it's even asked. So I appreciate all the great questions. And if you have any more, feel free to reach back, back out to me. I'll be here to go over anything you need. I will. I will. Thank you very much. You have a blessed day, all right? You too. Have a wonderful day. All right. Day's over with. That call is over with. What do you guys think of the call, man? Navajo is spread. Denver, Colorado. But give a nicer a call, man. She was nice enough to give us all the information needed about Navajo Express. The information she couldn't give us, she found out for us. And the information she couldn't find out she actually sent me in the email i mean this is a very long email what do you guys think of the call man tell me what do you guys think of the call let me know about it in the comments below and if you guys want me to call somebody definitely leave it in the comments below and if you have any questions about if you guys have any questions about Anything that you want me to ask for recruiters, leave that in the comments below. All right, so thanks to the subscriber that suggested Navajo this week. Uh, keep the suggestions coming. You know what I'm saying? If you guys want me to call somebody, let me know. After that, I am done. I am done. So hit me up. Tell me who's next.